The trans theoretical model, uh, often called stages of change, is a very popular framework to use when developing public health interventions. And this looks at behavior change in six stages, uh, stating that people go through six different stages as they move towards a change in their health behaviors. Uh, these stages are pre-contemplation, contemplation, preparation, sometimes called determination, action, maintenance, and then hopefully not, but termination, relapse, and reoccurrence. It's hopeful that once a person gets to maintenance, after six months, the behavior is considered a new habit, and so you don't have relapse or reoccurrence. There are a variety of ways of looking at the trans theoretical model, or TTM. Um, here is a, a linear way of looking at it, where a person starts in pre-contemplation. In pre-contemplation, the person is not ready to make a change. Quite often, they are not even aware that making the change has benefits for them. So if a person does not understand that exercise reduces their risk of premature early in death, in terms of reducing their risk of cardiovascular disease, cancer, and other hypokinetic lifestyle diseases, they might not even have on their radar wanting to include exercise in their daily routine. So that person would be in pre-contemplation. They're not ready to make a change. They might not even know that making the change would benefit them. Then the person moves to what we call contemplation. At this point, the person understands that the behavior provides benefits, but they're still ambivalent about whether or not they want to make the change. Um, they might feel that there are too many obstacles in the way. They don't have behavioral control over the behavior. There are several things, but they're generally not ready, kind of on the fence whether or not they should do it. But with a little help and assistance, they can then move to the preparation stage. In this stage, the person is getting ready to make a change. They're often collecting um, items to, to overcome barriers. In the case of exercise, maybe they're finding a place to exercise, maybe getting a new pair of sneakers, gym shoes, gym clothes, or finding an old t-shirt and shorts that they're going to use. Um, but they're getting ready, maybe getting an exercise partner, maybe joining a class at Orange Coast College so that they have time to exercise. But these are all the things that the person does in terms of preparing to make the change. So in preparation, the person has made the decision to change, and they're getting ready all the resources they need so that they're successful in their change. Then the person moves to the action phase. In this phase is action. So the person would start exercising. It is not uncommon in the early stages of action that the person, you know, forgets or makes a mistake or makes a mistake or, or falls back into their old pattern. That's normal because it's not a habit and a lot of energy and attention goes into making the new behavior part of their daily lives. So in the action phase, the person is participating in the behavior. They may have a few setbacks in the beginning but they're dedicated to making the change. As they continue to practice the behavior, they move into the maintenance stage. This is where after six months of participating in the behavior, it seems to have become a new habit, and then they maintain that behavior for the rest of their lives. Hopefully in, the terms, in terms of exercise, that's the case. So we have other ways of looking at this. So here's a model that has pre-contemplation on the top and it moves down to contemplation, preparation, action, maintenance. If the person has relapse, they may enter back into contemplation. They may actually even go back as far as pre-contemplation um, if they felt that practicing the behavior didn't have benefits. But you can see that, that these phases are fluid in terms of people's movement from one to the other. Here's another way of looking at it. This is in a circular pattern. So you start up here, pre-contemplation. The person is not yet considering the change or is unwilling or unable to change. And the primary task for the person is to raise their awareness, is having their awareness raised. Contemplation, they see the 
possibility of change, but they're still ambivalent and uncertain. So the primary task for the person is resolving their ambivalence and helping them. Our task is to help them to change the behavior. The next stage here, it's called determination, but um, generally it's called preparation. This is where they're committing to the change and they're gathering resources. They're still considering what to do, do, but they're gathering resources to help them be successful. The next stage, action. This is where the person participates in the behavior and they're taking steps towards the change, but it isn't stable. In other words, it's still not a habit. So here is a, a public health educator will help them implement the changes and learn to eliminate any of the barriers so that they don't relapse. Here we have maintenance where they have achieved the goals and the behavior and they are working towards making it a habit. Now if they have a recurrence, this is where they have difficulties and they fall back into their old habit. And uh, the primary task for a public health person would be to help them cope with the consequences um, to determine what to do next, where they're just unsurmountable barriers, um, things they need to take care of before they consider the change. Um, so it's the task to identify these barriers so that we can come up with strategies so that they don't have relapse the next time they try. So this um, map is helpful to someone who is in health education because what it does is it lists the stage and then it lists the actions that we would take. So if you have a person that's in pre-contemplation, what we would do as a public health individual, a, a public health officer, would be to offer them factual information and to explore with them the meaning of events that brought the person to the treatment, explore the results of previous efforts, and explore the pros and cons of the targeted behavior. When they move to contemplation, they will explore their self-efficacy. Do they have the belief that they can um, perform the behavior? We'll look at their expectations regarding what the change will entail, what will be required to make the change, and we'll summarize self-motivational statements and continue to explore the pros and cons. Because again, remember here they're still ambivalent, so we need to help them move towards resolving that ambivalence and making a commitment to the change. So here it says determination. Again, it's also called preparation. Here we offer them a menu of options for the change, again, looking at the pros and cons. Again, we try to lower those barriers. So if there are stumbling blocks or things that are going to get into in the way of their making the change, we try to identify them so that we can come up with strategies to overcome the barriers before they start. Um, people might enlist social support, so this is where getting an exercise partner is helpful. And lots of times having the person announce publicly that they're making the change will help with accountability. Because if you tell your family and friends that you're starting an exercise program, it's possible they're going to ask you how it's going. And so that accountability helps the person to commit to making the behavior change. So here we have action, and you can see that as a public health um, agent, we're going to support with realistic views and small steps. So if a person hasn't been exercising, we're not going to tell them that they need to exercise two hours, five days a week. That's unrealistic. Actually, they'll be so sore in two days, they're never going to want to exercise again. So we want to have small steps. Um, we help them identify high-risk situations. Um, and develop coping strategies. So I'm going to flip to smoking cessation. So with smoking, a lot of times there are triggers for people that makes them want to just smoke because of the trigger. So maybe when they're out socially with friends, maybe when they're at work and they get a break, they go out and smoke. So we would help them identify those high risk situations and come up with strategies. Maybe they don't go outside where all the smokers are during their break. They bring a book and, and read inside or something like that. Um, we help them to find new reinforcers for the positive change. And then again, provide family and social support. Then they move to maintenance where they have identified alternative behaviors. 
Um, maybe instead of smoking, they they participate, they chew gum or, or do something else. Again, we maintain supportive con um, contact with the individual, and um, hopefully it's become a behavior by this time. If there is a relapse where there's reoccurrence, we sit with the person or we help develop strategies so that they can learn from what we'll call their failure. It's really not a failure if they learn from it and they identify those areas where they truly struggled, um, things that were barriers so that we can identify strategies and coping mechanisms so that they can be successful the second time. 